Today we have a couple of really nice infinite series expansions for the cotangent and the cosecant functions. And both these series expansions have really elegant proofs. So let's just get started. And we're going to start off with this uh, series expansion for the cotangent function. Now the very start of this proof is enough to give you goosebumps. It's Euler's wonderful factorization of the sine function, whereby sine x by x equals the infinite product over the positive integers k of 1 minus x squared by pi squared times k squared. And next up, we want to use the natural logarithm. So on the left hand side, you have the natural log of sine x minus the natural log of x. And on the right hand side, because of the properties of the natural logarithm, the infinite product is going to be converted into an infinite sum over the positive integers k of the natural logarithms of 1 minus x squared by pi squared k squared. Next up, we want to differentiate this with respect to x. And this implies that on the left hand side, you have the reciprocal of sine x that looked like a little epsilon up there. You have the reciprocal of sine x and because of the chain rule, you have the cosine of x here uh, minus the derivative of the natural log of x, which is just the reciprocal of x. And this equals the sum over k of um, the reciprocal of 1 minus x squared by pi squared k squared. And because of the, because of the chain rule, once again, you have negative 2x by pi squared k squared. So this means on the left hand side, you have the cotangent of x minus 1 by x equal to the sum over k of, um, I'm going to multiply upstairs and downstairs by pi squared times k squared. And that'll give me a negative 2x term upstairs and a um, pi squared k squared minus x squared term downstairs. And if I can just introduce an extra negative sign by switching up the order down here, then I can get rid of this extra negative sign upstairs. Okay, cool. And this implies that the cotangent of x equals 1 by x plus the sum over k of all of this, which can be decomposed into partial fractions quite easily. I mean, you have, um, this can be factored out as x minus pi times k times x plus pi times k, correct? So you're going to have um, x minus pi times k, I believe. Uh, no, you need a, yeah, makes sense. Plus uh, x plus pi times k down here. And all you need are ones up here. And there you go. That's the required partial fraction decomposition. Now I'm going to write these two terms separately. You have 1 by x plus the sum over the positive integers k of 1 by x minus pi times k plus the sum over the positive integers of 1 by x plus pi times k. And for the sum in the middle here, I'm going to replace k by negative k. And that'll turn this into a sum over the integers k less than or equal to negative 1 of 1 by x plus pi times k plus the sum over k being greater than or equal to 1 of 1 by x plus pi times k. And looks like you have all the integers covered except for 0, which is taken care of by this term. So here you have x plus 0 times k, which is OK. Pun intended, sorry, bad math pun, followed by even worse handwriting. Anyway, so this implies that the cotangent of x equals the sum over all integers k of 1 by x plus pi times k which is a pretty awesome structure if you think about it. I mean, the cotangent function equals the cosine of x divided by the sine of x. So we know that the cotangent function isn't defined for x being equal to pi times k, which is one term that you have 
down here. So this is sort of like a factorization in the sum form around the poles or singularities of the function. So yeah, this is pretty damn cool if you ask me. Now the second infinite series expansion is even more fascinating. And it starts off with an integral representation of Euler's reflection formula. So yeah, this proof also requires some tool developed by Euler. This video was sponsored by Euler and so was the rest of higher mathematics. Anyway, so the integral I'm talking about, which we're going to call I, is the integral from zero to infinity of t to the alpha minus one dt divided by one plus t. And using uh, the second integral representation of the beta function with complex arguments u and v, which is the integral from zero to infinity of t to the v minus one dt divided by one plus t to the u plus v, we see on comparing the, co uh, comparing the exponents that v equals alpha and u equals one minus alpha. So this integral here is just the, uh, the beta function with arguments alpha and one minus alpha. And using the relationship of the beta function with uh, the gamma function, oh, terribly sorry, let me just erase all of this. So using the relationship uh, between the beta and the gamma functions, we have gamma alpha times gamma one minus alpha divided by gamma one minus alpha plus alpha, which is just gamma one. So that's just one anyway. So we have gamma alpha times gamma one minus alpha, which equals as per the reflection formula, pi times the cosecant of pi times alpha. Now, in order to get that series expansion, we're going to have to reevaluate this integral. But first, we need to spice it up a bit. So I'm going to perform a transformation going from the t world to the x world by letting t equal e to the x. And now this will imply the t to the 1 minus alpha. Oh, sorry, it was um, alpha minus 1 equals e to the alpha x times e to the negative x. And this also implies that dt equals e to the x dx. Okay, cool. So this is fairly straightforward. So this implies that i equals the integral from where to where exactly? Well, notice that if we want um, t to go to zero, we need x to approach negative infinity. So this is the integral from negative infinity. And for the upper limit, we still have positive infinity, of course, of e to the alpha x times e to the negative x and the differential element here is e to the x dx divided by 1 plus e to the x. Okay, cool. This looks quite nice indeed. So we're left with an integral from negative to positive infinity of e to the alpha x dx divided by 1 plus e to the x. Next up, we want to split up this integral over the real line. So we want to write it as the sum of an integral from negative infinity to zero plus that from zero to positive infinity. And the integral from negative infinity to zero is quite promising because on this interval, e to the x is less than one. So the integral from negative infinity to zero of e to the alpha x uh, divided by 1 plus e to the x, which we can write, of course, as being multiplied by 1 by 1 plus e to the x, integration with respect to x. Because e to the x is less than 1, we can, we can express this function in terms of a series expansion. So we have 1 by 1 plus x being equal to the sum over k, as in the non-negative integers, of negative 1 to the k times x to the k. However, in this case, we have 1 by 1 plus e to the x. So this evaluates out to the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times e to the x to the k, which we can write as e to the x times k anyway. Okay, so this is cool. We have a plan for the first integral. But what about the second one? We're going to have to do some modification here. So we have uh, sorry about that. I need to turn this off. We have e to the alpha x divided by 1 plus e to the x. 
dx. And what should we start off with? Well, my guess is that we first up use a transformation from the x world to the negative x world, and that'll give us the integral from zero to negative infinity of e to the negative alpha x divided by one plus e to the negative x and negative dx. And you can get rid of this negative sign, of course, by switching up the limits of integration. So yeah, it doesn't look that weird. So we now have two integrals from negative infinity to zero. And if I just multiply upstairs and downstairs by e to the x, I get a pretty nice structure. That's the integral from negative infinity to zero of e to the negative alpha x plus x, which we can write as x times uh, one minus alpha divided by one plus e to the x dx. And once again, we can express one by one plus e to the x in the form of an infinite series. So yeah, we've got something nice to work with. So using the transformed second integral, we can write i as the integral from negative infinity to zero of e to the x plus this e to the x times one minus alpha term, where I've just factored out the one by one plus e to the x term. Hold up, we have this um, e to the alpha x term, not just e to the x, right? So yeah, okay, cool. So that was pretty damn awesome. And using the series expansion for this function here, we have the integral from negative infinity to zero of e to the alpha x plus e to the x times one minus alpha, all being multiplied by the sum over k of negative one to the k times e to the kx. And because these two exponential functions are independent of the k variable, we can just slip them inside the summation operator. And that looks like an, a really good or a really bad arrow sign that may look like a poor man's Avenger symbol. Nah, it looks nothing like that. I think it looks pretty fucking horrible anyway. So yeah, I'm not gonna try and be fancy here. There you go, simplicity at its very best. Anyway, so we have this uh, integral from negative infinity to zero of the sum over k of negative one to the k times e to the x times k plus alpha. You get this on multiplication, of course, with the first term. And when you multiply e to the kx with the second term, you have e to the um, x times one plus k minus alpha. Okay, cool. And let's take a moment to notice that we have uh, two exponential functions that are damped on this interval from negative infinity to zero. So that means we have no problems regarding convergence or boundedness. So we can perform a switch up of the summation and the integration operators. And we have the sum of the integrals from negative infinity to zero of negative one to the k times e to the x. I'm just going to write all of this up here as a switch up because I'm lazy. And that's a lot of stuff to write. And now that we perform the switch up, we see that this uh, negative one to the k term is independent of x, right? And because it's independent of x, then that means we can just slip it outside of the integral. There you go, a very nice arrow. So we have the sum over k of negative one to the k times the integral from negative infinity to zero of all of this junk. And this is pretty easy to evaluate. I mean, you have the sum over k of negative one to the k, and on integration, you're gonna get e to the x times one uh, k plus alpha divided by k plus alpha. And for the second function, we have e to the x times one plus k minus alpha divided by one plus k minus alpha, and the limits are negative infinity to zero. Now in the limit as x goes to negative infinity, e to the x goes to zero. 
So we can just scratch all the terms in the lower limit and as x approaches 0, e to the x approaches 1. So this implies that i equals the sum over k of negative 1 to the k times 1 by k plus alpha plus 1 by k plus 1 minus alpha. And we're actually now pretty close to our series expansion for the cosecant fun function. And we can see that, we can see that by literally writing out the terms of this infinite series. What I'm trying to say is for the k equals zero term, you have one by um, alpha plus one by one minus alpha. And for the k equals one term, you have negative one by one plus alpha plus uh, one by two minus alpha. Oh, negative sign that is. Negative one to the one is uh, negative one. And for the k equals two part, you have one by two plus alpha uh, plus one by one by three minus alpha and minus so on and so forth. So just a rearrangement will show you exactly what I mean. One by alpha minus this term here, uh, minus one by one plus alpha plus one by two plus alpha. Yeah, we're getting somewhere, all right. Um, and on and on we go. Uh, another series here is starting off with one by one minus alpha, uh, minus one by two minus alpha, plus one by three minus alpha, and on and on we go. Now the first series on the right hand side of the equation can be written as the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative one to the k divided by k plus alpha. And the second one can be written as the sum over k or the sum over the positive integers k of negative one to the k plus one because the first term is positive so the one plus one equals two negative one squared yeah it adds up nicely of k minus alpha okay cool and now once again i'm going to perform that really cool transformation from k to negative k and that'll give me uh the sum over the integers k less than or equal to negative one uh we have this negative k plus one term now and negative k minus alpha and if you factor out a negative one term here if you just factor this out and you have negative one times k plus alpha and we have the same base negative one here so that's a negative sign up top cancellation quite nicely so we're left with negative one to the negative k and negative one to the negative k is the same thing as negative one to the k, right? Because negative one to the negative one is negative one. All right, everything's making sense quite nicely here. So we have these two series expansions. We have these two infinite series. And we can now combine them because we have all the non-negative integers and we have all the negative integers. So we have the sum over all the integers of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus alpha, and this equals your integral i. But we know that our integral i was actually pi times the cosecant of pi times alpha. So what if we replace alpha by x divided by pi? Well, this would imply that the sum over k of negative 1 to the k divided by k plus x divided by pi, and you can multiply upstairs and downstairs by pi, because last time I checked it was non-zero, equals pi times the cosecant of pi times x divided by pi. So the pi's cancel out quite nicely. So this implies that uh, the sum over k of negative one to the k divided by x plus k times pi equals the cosecant of x. 
a beautiful series expansion indeed and i quite enjoyed today's video i hope you did too be sure to like and subscribe thank you see you next time